Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, we are here today on a session on a parental burden in Tourette families. How can parents live well with ticks? Uh, we are here together, myself, Noah Benaroya, and child and adolescent psychiatrist and the head of psychiatric outpatient clinic at Schneider Children Medical Center. Here with me, Dr. Dana Feldman. She is child, she's child uh, psychologist and uh, together we direct the Tourette uh, Clinic at Schneider. And together with us, we are very honored to have uh, Professor John Piacentini from UCLA uh, University, who, uh, who will now uh, start uh, talking about an introduction of uh, how do parents feel and how, how do they react uh, to ticks. So please, John. Great. Thank you, Noah and Donna. Um, I'm really happy to be here to part of this um presentation to do an introduction to uh, dis a description of a treatment that you both have developed that's very exciting. So um, if we can have the next slide, please. So I'm going to just provide some initial background um, about the parental burden of Tourette's and what some prior family treatments for, um, for Tourette's have looked like. So um, as you all know, you know, the burden of Tourette's can be very significant in families. Um, it's a unique burden. Um, given the physical, mental, and social ramifications of Tourette's, Tourette's are very noticeable in public. They draw a lot of attention. People don't understand them. Also, um, the fact that uh, ticks onset early in, in development and peak in middle school, and these are very important age, as obviously, and um, developmental er times for children um, and families. So it can be a very, very high burden for families. Some of the factors that we know that go into this burden are misinformation. People don't really understand ticks, um, and they draw a lot of attention, as I just said. The shared stigma of, of parenting a child with Tourette's or being the sibling of a child with Tourette's, and what this means is that the stigma associated with Tourette's is transferred also to the other family members. So they share some of the same potentially negative perceptions or misunderstandings. Along with this, there's familial guilt about having a parent, a child with ticks, and a number of other factors as well. So not surprisingly, this leads to higher levels of parental stress in uh, youth with TS versus healthy controls. Um, TS plus ADHD and OCD is even higher stress and burden. And we know that um, parenting stress can be independent of tick severity, so even mild ticks can lead to a negative burden. We also know that caregiver burden and poor parental health is higher in, in youth with uh, in families of youth with Tourette's compared to asthma, another another impairing condition. So, what does this mean in a little more detail? There have been a number of studies. Uh, Jen Vermillion, uh, University of Rochester, working with a with a group of of investigators, found again that TS families have worse overall family quality of life and general family functioning than families with healthy kids. Severity of ADHD, OCD, and depression are each associated with predicted worse family impact in Tourette's patients. So again, the burden of comorbidity can make this even worse. Um, it's also important to know that warm and supportive family relationships are integral to long-term social emotional stability and quality of life in youth with Tourette's. And as proof of this, um, in the CBIT follow-up study that we conducted, um, following uh, youth from the CBIT study as that were children and adolescents nine years later into um, early adulthood, we found that poor family functioning in childhood predicts higher tick impairment in adults with TS. So the importance of early intervention with families to create more positive and healthy family environments is critical to long-term outcomes for youth with Tourette's. So what kind of treatments have been done already involving families? Well, we know that there's parent training for youth. Uh, Larry Scahill and Dennis Sukodolsky um, at Yale developed a parent training program for, for TS youth with disruptive behavior. So focusing on the disruptive behavior and rage outburst was it wasn't necessarily a, a tick specific treatment. We know that the functional intervention component of CBET and other treatments uh, is very important for reducing family involvement or involvement by others in ticks, and that can be very helpful in directly reducing tick severity. And there have been a number of 
uh, treatments focused on psychoeducation and supportive therapy with the focus on, again, psychoeducation, parent training, managing comorbidity, and skills building. And we know that these treatments can reduce tick-related impairment in the short term. And in some cases, even short-term tick reduction, but not long-term tick reduction. So helping the family doesn't necessarily help the ticks get better, but it really um, impacts the disruption and the impairment associated with ticks. And examples of some of these um, psychoeducation supportive interventions include the individual psychoeducation supportive therapy, which was the comparison treatment to CBIT that we used in the CBIT trials, the Living with Ticks program developed by Joe McGuire and Eric Storch, which is a broader comprehensive uh, psychoeducation support skills building, and a really exciting group um, by Sharon Zimmerman Brenner and group in Israel, Group Educational Intervention for Ticks, which again provides skills building, cognitive behavior therapy, psychoeducation, and support. These are all been helpful in reducing impairment um, in ticks and, and may be important for reducing the long term outcomes, although that hasn't to be studied yet. So thank you, John, for, for your great uh, introduction. I think uh, that uh, what you said just proves that we have uh, still a long way to go with uh, working with parents and children. And what we actually wanted to talk about is uh, groups that we developed here in Schneider uh, for parents and that, that are specific for parents and not like uh, another uh, part of protocol as they did in the past. It's really specific work with parents. So Dana will start now. Thank you. So working together over the years with children diagnosed with Tourette and their families, we both felt, we both felt the necessity of parent training as a key factor in treating uh, children. And we wanted to show you why we think that working with children specifically on focused on tics is not always enough. We know that for younger children or children with no motivation for treatment or other circumstances could all result in an ineffective focused treatment. So uh, we've started looking for more solutions. And over the last two years, we have de developed together uh, online training groups for parents only. So I'll go back a bit about what John talked earlier uh, from our experience, we know that parents come to our clinic and they are most commonly, commonly very anxious. They are worried about how they can help their children stop ticking and how their children will manage in the future. They're afraid of bullying and that ticks will interfere with the present or future common life goals of the children. Um, Others often blame themselves about some past event that hypothetically created ticks, or they feel guilty about how they respond to the children's ticks every day. And many parents feel frustrated that they can do nothing about the ticks, and they feel they see their child as vulnerable, but they cannot help him, and they feel helpless or incompetent. So all these complex feelings makes parents react to dicks in a way that makes them and their child suffer even more. For example, some tend to monitor, meaning watching their child closely for any hint of a new tick or using the, using the ticks as a sign of emotional distress. Others have a difficult time controlling themselves and keep commenting to the child about their ticks. You can stop it or remember what your psychologist said, keep practicing over and over. And I don't know, maybe some of you feel it familiar. And parents can also invest a huge amount of time and effort trying to conceal the ticks from family and friends, or even avoid talking with the school staff about it. And sometimes it can even be hard for parents to just be with their child when they are taking. So we wanted to help parents. We want to help parents and children feel better. And we wanted to do it without creating a month long waiting list. And so we decided that we should do this training with parents in groups rather than separately. 
However, while we planned this, COVID-19 emerged and it was difficult times, but online therapy work became common and it became easy and time-saving tool for parents and for therapists. And so we decided to create online parental tra training groups that we called Parents Living Well with Peaks. So what do we think is most important? Our principles, our main goal is to help parents regain their competence and become agent, agents of change. The first step is to accept the waxing and whining nature of tics. The tics usually come and go without a specific trigger. And we encourage parents to remember that in each wave, this too shall pass, okay? And to help each other and comfort each other that this current wave of tics will pass. Then parents learn how to change their reactions when their child is ticking. So they don't encourage tics inattentionally, as we said earlier. And last, we help parents redirect their attention. Instead of focusing on stopping the tics, parents are advised to focus on their child's strengths, help them achieve their age-appropriate goals, such as scholastic skills, social life, sports, hobbies, and so on. So how are we going to do all of that? Um, we created a mo four models in order to help parents for training models that we practice in our groups. And to give you a small taste of what we do, we will go over these models now quickly together. The first models, model is called psychoeducation. According to clinical guidelines, psychoeducation is crucial when treating tics and Tourette. Many of you as experienced parents probably know that there are numerous misconceptions and misbeliefs about Tourette and tics. And again, John mentioned it earlier, and helping parents know more about tics and comorbidities actually helps them cope better. And here you can see some of the slides we use in Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> the fonts you don't know, they are Hebrew signs. And we use this as a psychoeducation presentation. We talk about what are tics. We talk about the comorbidities, about medications, about the vaccine and whining. You can see the waves, about premonitory urge, and so on. The next model is called normalizing tics. In this model, we help parents to better respond and feel comfortable talking about tics. It is also important to differentiate between tics and other movements, such as being hyper, hyperactive as part of ADHD, which a lot of our kids have, or having compulsions as part of OCD. A lot of the time, parents are afraid to talk to the child freely about tics, or they try to hide it from relatives and families. So in our group, parents practice talking with their child in an age-appropriate manner, and we encourage to become agent of change and to teach the child environment about tics. It could be either grandma or the teacher or all the pupils in their class and so on. Okay, so we were lucky here at Schneider at our Tourette clinics that we work together, um, psychologists and psychiatrists. And in our group, Noah takes a psychiatric part and explains about medication to the parents. So she will take the lead now and explain to us a bit further on. <laughs> so <clears throat> actually our third model is a medication management, which we actually give a lot of education about common medication, like when, when to use medication, knowledge about on common medications, side effects, uh, <clears throat> what to give in Tourette, what to give in comorbidities. It's important for us that, that parents will actually know uh, a lot of, uh, 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 gain a lot of knowledge about medication. We break the myth about uh, tics and ADHD medications. We know today that we can give uh, ADHD medication to, to patients with tics. Uh, often many parents are, are so afraid to give stimulants and meanwhile their children suffer so much at school and with friends because of the ADHD. 
We discuss common sides of effects of medications uh, versus benefits. Uh, we present everything and discuss it. So people are, our parents really know uh, uh, what the doctor is talking about. Uh, how, how should they choose? How, how, the, how the physician is choosing my, my medica the medication for my children? So they feel much more confident uh, in giving uh, uh, the medications for children. Our last model, um, which is also very important, is the psychological tools. Um, parents of children with tics need to have a large psychological toolbox. Uh, the, the, it helps them to cope with the common difficulties, the difficulties uh, that the children uh, encounter. For example, children with ADHD often suffer from uh, uh, emotional regulation, temper tantrums, uh, defiant behaviors, all these can be better managed if the parents are self-regulated. Uh, for this, another example is uh, dealing with ADHD, with OCD and anxiety. Uh, when when children uh, suffer from uh, comorbid anxiety or OCD, uh, family accommodation is very common. What does the accommodation mean? Uh, parents tend to participate unintentionally in the child's rituals. And answering doubting questions again and again, facilitate, uh, facilitate, facilitate, they facilitate avoidance because they say, okay, it's hard for him, don't do that, it's not, it's not so important, okay, let's avoid it. But actually, we need to stop family accommodation, and it's so important step in reducing anxiety and OCD. Dana described earlier how parents come to us feeling the, if, the, as if they are helpless. So we want them to regain parental competence and to live actually well with the tics. What does it, it include? It includes uh, accepting the presence of tics and comorbidities, focusing on child strengths that we talked before, and really reprioritizing parents' focus. We need them to focus on the difficulties, on the things that, that uh, really stop their children from developing well, and not to focus on the tics. So our main goal, uh, if we think about it, is to, to decrease parental burden and to, to decrease parental stress in order to improve uh, uh, the well-being and, uh, and functioning of the parents. But in turn, it can hopefully enable children develop and well-being um, <clears throat> and, and it really helps them, uh, uh, their children. Let's see now uh, if we succeed so far. So what you can see here is a pie chart. Most of, of the children whose parents participated in our group uh, suffer from prominent tics. They suffer from 36% uh, suffer from moderate tics, 8% uh, from marked tics, as you see, severe tics, 23%, and only almost a third of them uh, have only mild tics. So really it's representing population. Um, if we, we are talking about comorbidities, uh, other difficulties that accompany the tics, uh, you see that our, the children of our parents, they, they suffer from high rates of accompanying disorders. In fact, most of our children suffer from at least one uh, disorder in, all, in addition to the tics. Almost half suffer from ADHD, also uh, half suffer from anxiety disorder. Third of the children suffer from temper outbursts and 15% have OCD. When, when we compare tics and comorbidity measures at the start of the group and, and at the end, we found some very interesting results. The severity of tics of, uh, of, and, and of, comorbid, of, and of comorbid difficulties of the child did not really change before and after intervention with the parents. However, we found statistically significant reduction in the tics impairment score, very, very similar to what John uh, described uh, before, from the other, uh, from the other uh, studies that were done. Uh, the, the impairment score represents how much the child and parents perceive the tics as impairing their life uh, and their children's life and well-being. Thus, at the end of the intervention, although parents reported the tic severity remained the same, their impact on their child's life actually decreased. So what did the parents think about their group? And did we succeed to change their attitude towards ticks? 
So, well, as you can see, 96% uh, of the parents said that they would recommend it to other parents. Uh, almost 90% uh, were very satisfied. And most parents reported that they gained some new knowledge and that their attitude has, or, has changed. However, as you can see here, many of the parents remained worried about the ticks and quality of life, which means that we still have some work to do. So uh, we want to conclude uh, now. So the groups are really feasible and parents are satisfied. And we realized that uh, our pre preliminary results are, are, are promising. Um, our takeoff message, our take -off message uh, to all of you is that tick-focused therapy, unfortunately, is not enough to help families. And uh, living well with ticks is very important. Meeting other par parents seems very helpful for other parents. They, they feel much relaxed when they see, uh, today, just today, uh, one of the parents uh, told us, wow, to see other parents, it, it's, it's great to see. I, I'm not alone anymore. So it's so important. So what, what is really your take home message from us is that we gave you a taste of what we do to help parents, but we encourage you to seek help for yourself so you can better treat your child. We would like to thank uh, our Tourette Clinic. Uh, first of all, we'd like to, to thank John. Maybe you will have some more remarks, but uh, <laughs> first of all, thanks. And we would like to, th to thank uh, our clinic, our Tourette Clinic, especially Meitar, Timor, and Noah Elfer, who helped uh, uh, writing this uh, lovely presentation, and uh, Dr. Tammy Steinberg, Professor Alan Apter, for establishing uh, the Tourette Clinic here in Schneider, like, I don't know, it's, I guess it's already 25 years ago, and for accompanying us uh, uh, ever since. And to all the parents, of course, that participated in our groups and uh, in, in this study. So this is this was a really wonderful talk, and I, I just I'm so impressed with this group. Um, we've been wanting to do this in our cl clinic for also about 25 years, <laughs> and we're 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 really excited to um, actually start using this group in our clinic. As we've talked about, I, I just think it's really wonderful and so important to provide support to parents um, with the kids because that that's oftentimes is overlooked in treatment. A lot of times, kids go in for treatment and the parents are ignored. Um, so this is just really, really a fantastic work and um, really excited to do larger studies with this and get it out there so people can can use it. Thank you for including me in the presentation. <laughs> yes. That's great. Thank you very much, John. Yes. Thank you, everyone. We are here online to <laughs> <laughs> answer questions. And yes. hope you all have a great uh, conference. Thank you.